We are at Defiance High School for Wapakoneta and New Albany in the Ohio Prep Baseball Report Classic. My name is Todd Walker. Nate Garlock is alongside as the Wapak Redskins meet the New Albany Eagles in this non-conference matchup. Wapak will be the visitors on the board. Let's check their lineup against the pitcher Grant Reapinoff, the right-hander for the Eagles. Taylor Eccles will lead it off at shortstop. Grant Jolly bats second, plays third. Landon Brandt in, left, in right field bats third. Pitcher Caden Moore will be the cleanup man. Austin West at first base bats fifth. Ryan Price in left field bats sixth. Drew Bailey, the DH, bats seventh. Second baseman Ryan Camper bats eighth. And center fielder Zach Meekamp bats ninth for Wapakoneta. Redskins come in off a big league win last night. They beat Elida at Ed Sandy Field 10 to two. And actually, I think they moved that game to Wapakoneta. It was supposed to be played at Ed Sandy Field. They actually ended up playing it at Wapak. Nonetheless, the Redskins won as the visiting team on their own field. Grant Jolly went six innings, allowed just two runs. Taylor Eccles was the hitting star. He went four for five with a triple and three runs scored. Redskins come into the game at 11 and three, six and one in the Western Buckeye League. And they will take on a new Albany team that has been a perennial power in Division I the last decade or so. And they won a state championship in Division Three back in 2004. That shows you how much this school district has grown. They are now in Division I. In fact, they beat Coldwater in the 2004 Division Three state championship. And they won another state championship in 2021. Last year, they were knocked out in the regional final by Grove City. And this year they are by record struggling a little bit, but they are still a team loaded with talent. They are 10 and eight. They are six and three in the Ohio division of the Ohio Capital Conference. They are rated number 33 in the state in division one by Ohio Prep Baseball Report. Wampakoneta is rated number seven in the state in division two by PBR. And we're ready to roll. Taylor Eccles, the Wampakoneta shortstop will stand in to face Grant Reapinoff. And the first pitch is a strike in the outside corner. This is a game two of four games here today with this Ohio Prep Baseball Report Spring Classic. They try to bring a bunch of good teams together that might not normally play each other and see a lot of good talent on the same field at the same time. Eccles swings through that one. He was hitting just 250 heading into yesterday's game, but as I said, had a big game against Elida going four for five. Down two strikes, Eccles watches that one. Oh, it hit him. Caught him on the front elbow as it uh, came through, and Taylor Eccles will be on base for the Redskins. So Wapakoneta gets their leadoff man aboard. Checking on the Pitching numbers for Reepinoff. He has thrown only five and a third innings this season. So obviously he's not uh, their ace by any stretch of the imagination. And it's what you see a lot of times in non-league games. You don't uh, throw your number one very often in these matchups, although they were rained out last night. They were supposed to play a game down in Central Ohio against Westerville Central. That ball is up and in. Our umpires for tonight. Jay Moran behind the plate, Jeffrey Bachman on the bases. They switched positions from the opener, our first game that we had with Coldwater beating Liberty Menton. There's a pop-up, foul ground right side off the bat of Grant Jolly, and it is put away by the first baseman, Zach Berrienbrock. Speaking of that, let's uh, check the defense behind Reepinoff. Marion Brock at first, Oliver Schroyer at second, Brandon Eckleberry at short, Garrett Given at third. Outfield left to right, Whit Romer, Owen Johnson, Eli Henderson. Ben Clark is the backstop. And on the mound, Grant Reepinoff. This is Landon Brandt. That one bounces through, and Eccles will easily scoot into the second base. Brandt, the uh, probably most uh, highly rated player on this team, has battled with an injury to his non-throwing elbow. He is expected to pitch an inning today. He has missed some time, not just pitching, but also just playing, playing period because of that injury, even though it's his non-throwing elbow. 
Swing and a miss. He talked about it, his latest bullpen actually got him pretty excited. He was rearing back and throwing into the low 90s and during his last bullpen session. So he seems to be coming back strong, and they're hoping to get him some work here towards the end of the game. Landon, a 350 hitter in somewhat limited action this year. Big cut and a miss. Yesterday he went one for two with a run and an RBI and the win over Elida. Landon's only had 20 at-bats, seven hits, all singles. The Wapak been winning without arguably their best player. One and two RBI chance here as Landon steps out. Of course, he is the son of head coach Jason Brandt. Wapak six and one in the league, hoping for Defiance to knock off Bath and create a three-way tie late in the season atop the WBL. That game was supposed to be played yesterday, Defiance and Bath, they got rained out. One ball, two strikes to Landon Brandt. Big left-hand batter. He's got Eccles at second with one out. Tried to check, he did not. Strike three, swinging. So a big strikeout for Grant Rapinoff. And that means two outs for pitcher, pitcher Caden Moore. Caden. Yesterday was two for four. Scored a run, drove in a run, and had a double in the 10-2 win over Elida. And he is hit by a pitch as Reepinoff came inside and for the second time in this inning has hit a batter. So Austin West will now stand in. So it's been a bit of a rough inning for Reepinoff in that he's hit two batters and he's thrown a wild pitch, but he does have two outs, and Austin West will try to bring in a run here. First baseman for Wapakoneta awaits the first offering, and he takes ball one. West didn't have a hit yesterday, but he walked twice. He drove into, had a sack fly. So a productive day, despite being hitless. One ball and nothing, swing and a miss. And that will make it one ball, one strike. Wapak looking to draw first blood here against the New Albany Eagles. 1-1 one, one pitch. That one down and swinging over top of the pitch is West. That ball, in fact, hit the turf, was not caught cleanly, but West is down two strikes. Austin 235 batter with a double on the season. Six RBI coming into that game with Elida now is eight RBI. That one pushes him off the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Redskins have a threat thanks to two hit batters. See if West can come up with a run scoring hit here in the top of the first. Grant Reepinoff is set. Here's the pitch. Blew it past him, 85 mile per hour heater and West couldn't catch up to it. So Wapak leaves two runners on in the first. We go to the bottom of the first. We're scoreless. It's high school baseball on WOSN. New Albany coming to bat against Wapakoneta right-hander Caden Moore. Here's their lineup. Owen Johnson in center field. Oliver Schroyer at second, bats second. Catcher Ben Clark will bat third. Eli Henderson in right is the cleanup man. Garrett Given at third base bats fifth. Charlie Oakleaf, the DH, bats sixth. Zach Varianbrock, the first baseman, bats seventh. Whit Romer, the left fielder, bats eighth. Brandon Eckleberry, the shortstop, bats ninth. Here's the Wapakoneta defense behind Mr. Moore. Austin West at first, Ryan Camper at second, Taylor Eccles at short, Grant Jolly at third. Outfield left to right, Ryan Price, Zach Neekamp, and Landon Brandt. Preston Hinkle is behind the plate, and the first pitch is outside and low to Owen Johnson for New Albany. For Caden Moore, his fourth appearance, all starts, 13 innings. He's behind two and nothing. Two wins on the season. He's given up 10 hits and 12 runs in 13 innings. Only seven are earned. 
Five walks, 15 strikeouts, a 377 earned run average. Chopper to third, Jolly playing in, fields it, throws across, and they just do get the out. And Austin West, a bit of a collision there as Jolly's throw took him into the baseline, but they get the out. Oliver Schroyer, now the batter for New Albany. Wapak, only a 930 fielding percentage, so they've not been stupendous in the field. They have 28 errors on the season. Here's ball one to Oliver Schroyer, a left-hand batter. The second baseman takes a strike. Even the count of the ball, a strike. Wapak did not commit any errors yesterday in their 10-2 win over Elida. They had 13 hits in that game. Two balls and a strike now. Of course, the Western Buckeye League, it's going to be a three-horse race there. You've got Bath as yet to lose in the conference. Defiance and Wapak right behind them. There's a foul ball. Make it two balls, two strikes. Caden Moore, we expect, will go three innings, followed by Ryan Price, and Landon Brandt will get to pitch for the first time in a while. 2-2 two -two pitch, a weak roller, right side, first baseman West, flips late to the pitcher covering, and it's going to have to go as a hit, I think. The pitcher did not get over there fast enough. No more that time kind of watched it develop, and I think realized too late that his first baseman was too far off that bag, and yeah. by then it was... It was going to be too late, and Schroyer had some good speed to get down to first. So a mistake by the Wapak defense turns it out into a hit. And Ben Clark will now bat. Clark, the catcher for this Eagle program, consistently one of the best in the OCC. The fastball bounces, and boy, the runner Maybe should have gone, but Preston Hinkle getting the start today behind the dish and made a nice recovery. If he'd have broke when he first saw that go, I yeah, think he'd have made, made that it. one pretty easily, but he hesitated. And it was a nice job by Clark to get to that ball quickly. 1-0 pitch. That one bounces in, and somehow Hinkle catches it clean. So Caden Moore a little juiced up here. He has bounced two in a row. Wapak had a couple of base runners in the first, but couldn't score. And that one bounces and finally gets away, and that'll be a wild pitch. That ball pretty much bounced the exact same way to the exact same spot as yeah. the last one. This time, though, uh, Schroyer did not hesitate as he got down to second. He said, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, uh, but you know, well, you know. <laughs> Full count. I'm sorry, 3-0 pitch, not full count, strike call. Caden Moore trying to battle back here. He got the first out and should have had the second out on that ball that Schroyer hit, but he didn't get to the bag in time off the mound. 3-1 pitch, foul back, 84 miles an hour. So Moore's throwing hard. He's just got to get his location down here. Ben Clark, the catcher for New Albany at the plate. Full count. Clark, a 319 batter, and he fouls that one back. He's got six doubles and two home runs. The Eagles actually have three home runs on the season, which is like a power explosion in the high school game. Seems like it anymore. Huh? Yeah, well, the first game we did, neither team has a home run all season. Payoff pitch again, all four. So the Eagles flapping their wings here in the first inning. A single and a walk. Brings up Eli Henderson. Henderson, the cleanup man, the right fielder. Only 13 ABs on the season with three hits, one of them a double. Borderline pitch called a strike. 87 miles an hour from Caden Moore. So he's uh, getting lathered up out there. If he can 
Rain in his control, it should be hard to handle. 0-1, off speed, chopped right off the plate. Pitcher Moore fields it and makes the only play he can, which is the first base. And that high bounce took any chance of a double play out of play, but good job by Moore, fielding his position and getting the easy out. So Garrett Given will try to give his team the lead here. He steps in with two on and two out. Runners at second and third. Ball one to Given. 350 batter and only 20 at bats on the season. Seven for 20 with a couple of doubles. He's driven in five. Foul ball on an 89 mile per hour fastball. So as this inning has gone on, Caden Moore has found a little more giddy up. One ball, one strike, and the Eagles third baseman. Off-speed pitch hit, and a shortstop attempts the short, hand, short hop and then throws it away. But only the first run scores. And it's one nothing, New Albany. Eccles tried to field that on the short hop and didn't get his body in front of it, and that's gonna be an error. That allows the first run of the game to score. You know, and that first run is the one that Got on base because of the six, misplay Gunther. by Moore as he didn't get over to first base. So that air comes back to haunt him as New Albany takes the early lead. Well, as I said, the numbers indicate Wapak's not been as sharp defensively as I'm sure they'd like to be. And it has cost him here in this first inning. Charlie Oakleaf is now the batter. Oakleaf is the DH for New Albany. All two from Caden Moore. The game we did earlier today saw Coldwater beat Liberty Benton 10 to nothing. There's a pop up right side right over our heads and out of play. As you can see in our uh, corner of the screen, the radar gun here at Defiance displays on the scoreboard out there, so we're able to pick it up on the camera and put it on your screen. 2-1 pitch is high, and now they've got the runner hung up. Not sure what happened here. They're gonna try and get the pickle. Now they're gonna go to third, and they're gonna uh, get the man out. So they tried to bait Wapak into making a mistake, but they get the man out at home. And that's what was going on. He wasn't trying to steal, he was just trying to draw the throw. And ultimately, Wapakoneta got the out at the plate to end the inning. And we go on to the second inning. New Albany leading Wapakoneta one to nothing on WOSN. Number five, Brian Price. That's Ryan Price ready to bat for Wapakoneta. They trail one to nothing as we head to the second inning here at Defiance. Todd Walker and Nate Garlock bringing it to you. The Ohio Prep Baseball Report Spring Classic. Second of four games today. There's a foul back. I got caught a piece of our home plate umpire, Jay Moran. Weather continues to slowly improve as the day goes on, but still a bit breezy and when the sun isn't shining, which is the majority of the time, it's uh, kind of chilly out there, but certainly playable for April in Ohio. There's ball one. Ryan Price, left fielder, had a hit in three trips against Elida yesterday, scored a run, drove in a run, that 10-2 win. Ball two. Wapak at 11 and three, six and one in the WBL. Highly thought of by the Ohio Prep Baseball Report. They're rated seventh in the state in Division II and number 20 overall among all schools. There's a ball fouled out of play. Ryan Price, 6'2 junior. For coach Jason Brandt, the veteran boss of the Redskins. Won a couple of WBL titles in his tenure and had a couple of teams finish state runner-up. 
could forget that classic with CJ in the state title game a number of years ago and heartbreaker for the Redskins. And their second runner up finish. And that one, I'm not sure, it must have been inside. Full count. Boy, I tell you what, good eye by Ryan Price because that looked right there. Of course, we are off to the first base side here with our vantage point in the press box at Defiance. Payoff pitch from Grant Rapinoff. And that one's not requiring a good eye as it bounces in there. So Ryan Price is the third Wapakoneta at a base runner. They have yet to get a hit. Two hit batters and now a walk. And Drew Bailey steps in. Bailey, a six foot freshman. Pitch to him. Squares, pulls back, ball one. Drew only has a two at bats on the season, has yet to record a hit. Runner at first, nobody out. Third baseman charging in, expecting the bunt, and there is a wild pitch. That'll take care of the sacrifice. Yeah, that's going to bring a mound visit from head coach Sandman. So, that is the second wild pitch thrown by Rapinoff to go with the two hit batters and a walk. So he's had a tough afternoon to this point. For New Albany, head coach Michael Sandman. Last year they were 24 and seven and the monster matchup in the regional final, they fell to Grove City. But uh, another great season and Coming in, they thought this was a team that had a lot of depth and that was going to be a big strength for them. And like I said, to this point, their record at 10 and 8 is not maybe as gaudy as you would expect, but I don't think anybody is going to look past New Albany when they get them uh, perhaps in a tournament matchup. Well, and reaping off too, you know, we've seen he has the arm strength. I mean, he was he's throwing his well, fastball. He can throw hard, it's yeah. It's just that control right now is just eluding him. Well, the meeting is over. Let's see if Rapinoff can employ the tips that were given. A bunt by Bailey is a good one. Now they're going to go to third, and they're going to get the out. That's a nice play by the first baseman, Barian Brock, as he did not hesitate. And I'm not sure Ryan Price got a real good jump off the bat. No, I think you're right. I think he, you know, because of the bunt, you know, maybe he wasn't as aggressive getting into third as he could be, and it was just a great heads-up play by the first baseman. That is a good wheel and fire by Barry and Brock. Coach Jason Brandt, meanwhile, not in total agreement with the decision rendered by Jeffrey Bachman at third base. I think his argument's going to be, because it looked like the tag might have came up on the chest. He's thinking maybe his player got his hand well, in before the tag. Here's our replay. It was an awkward-looking slide and tag, and... Yeah, I mean, if, if we could slow that down and look frame by frame, he's probably safe. But most of the time at this level without that kind of look back, and like it was for 100 years in big league baseball, you're out now. And the ball got there in plenty the ball of time. Was there, the, yeah. the glove was down. Yep. So one out, here's Ryan Camper. That bounces in, and that's well played by the catcher, Ben Clark. So that's a... Three to five put out at third base. Bailey is at first. One nothing New Albany leading. Wapak batting in the second. And ouch. You could hear that thud all the way up here on the back of the leg of Ryan Camper. Third hit batter by Grant Rapinoff. <laughs> Camper's not rubbing it, but that was an 85 mile an hour fastball right into the small of the back. I thought it hit him in the leg, but wherever either, it hit either him, way, some, it's not going to feel good no matter where it was. Ouch. So here's Zach Niekamp, the center fielder. Hoping he's not in for similar treatment here. First and second, one out. That ball's hit the other way, but bending foul. Niekamp in that game against Elida yesterday had two of the 13 Wapakoneta hits. He drove in a pair. Wapak scored four in the top of the first to take control of that game and really were never threatened in beating the Bulldogs. 
No balls and a strike to the Skins center fielder. Off speed pitch missed. One ball, one strike. Wapak had two base runners in the first, again without a hit. That was two hit batters. This time, a walk and a hit batter has produced their two base runners. They need a hit. 1 1 pitch from Reepinoff. Another breaking ball. Ball two. Redskins at first and second. Wapak. 33 stolen bases on the season, so not a prolific base-stealing team. Two ball, one count, uh, two ball, one strike count, and that's a strike for strike two. Number nine hitter, Zach Neekamp, awaits a 2-2 two -two pitch. That was another nice play by Ben Clark. Very well done by the catcher moving to his right. Clark's been having to do a whole lot of work behind the plate here so far, and we're just into the top of the second. Ben Clark's a Oakland recruit, so he can be heading up north to play collegiately for the Golden Grizzlies. And there's a foul back. So full count again. Another payoff pitch. Right down the middle. And Neat Camp is out shopping. Out number two. Another 85 mile an hour fastball. You know, the way that reaping off is been pitching right now, it's almost coaching staff, you might just want to tell them, you know what, throw the fastball till they show they can hit it. Yeah. Stop trying to do anything else with it. Just throw it down there and let's see what happens. Taylor Eccles was hit by a pitch his first time up. And uh, Taylor feeling good at the plate after that four hit day yesterday that included a triple. Didn't really get a chance to hit the first time up. Two outs, two on. Foul back. Wapak had a tremendous season last year. That was derailed early in the district final. They lost to Tiffin Columbian. Nothing in one. And another hit batter. That was another breaking ball that time. And it just didn't break. So Wapak, with the bases loaded, without benefit of a hit, Fourth hit batter for Grant Reepinoff. And Grant Jolly now with a chance to really do some damage. And if I'm Reepinoff, I really am thinking, you know, just throw the fastball. Don't no breaking yep. stuff. Don't try it to pinpoint low. Just just throw it. Throw it hard until they show that they can hit it or handle it. Because everything else right now just doesn't seem to be working for them. There's an 85 mile per hour fastball for a strike. Grant Jolly, 359 batter coming into the weekend. The double and two triples this season. Had one hit yesterday, a single. This is a fly ball, right field side going foul and out of the reach of the Eagles chasing it, Barry and Brock and Henderson. So 0-2 on Grant Jolly, of course Jolly He's also one of their best pitchers, their ace, I guess you could say, at this point in the season. He pitched the first six innings yesterday and held he lighted two runs. Nothing in two to Jolly with the bases loaded. Strike three call in the outside corner. And Jolly struck out looking, as did Zach Niekamp earlier in the inning. So Grant Reepinoff creates a lot of trouble for himself, but then extricates himself with a clean bill of health, leaving the bases loaded. On to the bottom of the second here in Defiance, New Albany leads Wapakoneta, one nothing. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. That's Caden Moore ready to 
pitch for the second time in this game. He allowed an unearned run in the first inning. One nothing, New Albany leading Wapakoneta. Charlie Oakleaf fouls one back. Oakleaf was at the dish when New Albany had runners on the corner with two out. They ran the man from first. Wapak got him in a pickle and then threw out a runner at the plate trying to score. Breaking ball strike. That's a beauty, 68 miles an hour from Caden Moore. We saw Moore in the upper 80s with some of his pitches in the first inning. That one at 87 was well out of the strike zone. You bring that down and I mean, it just looks so different. You know, talking about mid 60s and then immediately coming back with upper 80s. And then dropping at 72 called. in there. And that is a strikeout looking for Caden Moore. His first strikeout is Charlie Oakley with bat in hand, heads to the dugout. He had Oakley completely confused on that one. Zach Berrienbrock is now the batter for New Albany. 207 hitter on the season. All high. Barry and Brock, six hits, all singles on the season. 1-0, swing and a miss. And Caden Moore just saying, come get you some of this 85 mile per hour fastball. Barry and Brock unable to connect. Another breaking ball, 72 mile per hour pitch there, so Moore Really mixing his stuff up here. One ball, two strikes. And fouled back to the screen. New Albany leading one to nothing. The strength of a Wapak error. That fastball is not caught by Preston Hinkle behind the dish. A little bit of a breeze today. It's not really affected play, but it is blowing from right to left across the diamond. 2-2 two -two pitch. A little bit high. Full count. Caden Moore. Fires a payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. 88 mile per hour heater and Barry and Brock is down on strikes and Whit Romer will bat with two out nobody on second straight strikeout for more Whit Romer watches one skip past the catcher I think we've seen more balls thrown past the catcher in two innings here than you might see all season. That one is way high. Romer, only 13 at bats on the season. He does have six hits, two of them doubles. 2 0 pitch. Pop up out of play. All turf diamond here at Defiance. 375 straightaway center, 325 down the lines, and 355 to the power alleys. Here is a drive to left. Ryan Price going back and over toward the line. He doesn't get it. It bounces off the wall. And Price will return it to the infield for the cutoff man, and that's a double for Whit Romer. Price just took a bad angle that time. And then realized he's going to have to start going back, and the ball just kept carrying and carrying and just out of the reach of his glove. Yeah, that's a good point, Nate. I'm not sure he recognized where that ball was going quickly enough to take the proper route, and it cost him. Now Wapkin at a catcher, Preston Hinkle, will come out and talk to his pitcher, Caden Moore, as Brandon Eckleberry stands in for New Albany. Eckleberry. Two for 14 on the season. Interestingly, 
for New Albany. Nobody has more than 65 plate appearances this year among their 18 games. Fastball, one ball and nothing. Well, they've used uh, quite a few different players in their lineup throughout the season. 1-0 pitch. 85 mile per hour fastball is fouled out of play. Big game for New Albany coming up on Monday. They host a Grove City. Grove City beat them three to one earlier in the year. Looking ahead to weather, that is going to be a rough day That's for be, baseball. You're right, yeah. That's probably not going to happen <laughs> on Monday. You just might as well scratch it now. Two balls and a strike now, as uh, that time Moore punched 90 on the gun. But 90 outside is still a ball. 2-1 pitch. Off speed. Popped up, right side, first baseman Austin West. Juggled it, couldn't grab it. Foul ball, that ball was really probably well played by West, a tough angle. He had to try and find it, and of course it's got that spin coming off the right-hander's bat, so it's taking a weird spin and running over his shoulder. He could not negotiate the grab. So, it's just a strike. Two balls, two strikes to Brandon Eckleberry. Wapakoneta already trailing one nothing. Caden Moore trying to keep it there. The Wapak right-hander has the sign from Preston Hinkle. There's his pitch. Ball outside. Squirts away from Hinkle, but he retrieves it before any attempt at advancement by Romer at second base. Caden Moore, payoff pitch. Hit hard up the middle, base hit. That's gonna score a run for New Albany. And they lead it two to nothing. Pretty good throw by Zach Niekamp from center field, but Romer had such a good jump and pretty good wheels, he scored easily. And a single by Brandon Eckleberry. And New Albany has a 2-0 lead. So Moore got the first two men on strikes, but the eight and nine hitters come up with double single to put another run on the board. Now back to the top of the lineup with Owen Johnson. Just missed for Caden Moore. Johnson grounded to third his first time up. And ball two up. Johnson leads the team in plate appearances, has played in every game. 352 batter coming into the day with four doubles and two triples. 2-0 pitch, a scalded to right, base hit. Now here's a throw from Brandt, and it is gonna be in time with a diving tag to get the out at third. Boy, landed Brandt, hung out a rope, but Grand Jolly got off the bag to field it, and dove back in and tagged Brandon Eckleberry out. And that's how you do it with an outfield assist to end the inning. However, New Albany scores again. We go to the third, Eagles lead Wapak 2-0 on WOSN. Well, how many times do you see it? You make a great defensive play to end an inning and you lead off the next inning. That's the case for Landon Brandt. He threw out a runner at third to end the second inning for New Albany. And he bats leading off the third for Wapak. Redskins trail 2-0. Todd Walker and Nate Garlock with you here at Defiance at the Ohio Prep Baseball Report Spring Classic. Ball one to Landon Brandt, who struck out his first time up. 
you mentioned it off air, but you know, there's a lot of outfielders you may run on. Landon Brand is not usually one that Don't you want to test. Strike called. He made New Albany pay. Now has an opportunity here to get this inning started with get the offense rolling. Strike called from Reepenhoff on a 88 mile per hour fastball in the inside corner. Foul ball at the plate. Landon Brandt down a ball, two strikes. Landon, of course, was a standout last season for Wapakoneta. Honorable mention, all Ohio by the Ohio Prep Baseball Report, Indiana State recruit. Last year, hit 400. Had five doubles and three triples last year, stole 15 bases. Now he's senior, awaiting the one-two pitch, and he just got a piece of that breaking ball. Two runs, four hits for New Albany. Wapak's left five base runners through two innings, but they don't have a hit. Four hit batters and a walk. The umpire says it's 2-2. I don't think anybody else agrees, but that's going to be the count. And Brant rolls it to first. Easy play for Barry and Brock, and he makes it easy. Beats Brant to the bag. One up, one down. Grant reaping off. Other than hitting batters, has really been effective. He's got a pop-up. He's got uh, four strikeouts, actually. Caden Moore, his opposite number, stands in now. Reaping off brings it and misses away. One ball and nothing to the Wapakoneta pitcher. That was close, but missed. Two balls, no strikes. Reaping off, bounces that one in there. So it's 3-0 and oh now. Caden Moore yesterday played third base in the win over Elida, had a couple of hits, scored a run, knocked in a run. One of his two hits was a double. He's ahead three balls and nothing here. Ball four. So second walk issued by Reepinoff to go with the four hit batters. And as I said, he is have yet not allowed a run. Wapak can't come up with the big hit. Austin West will try to do something about it. He struck out to end the first inning. The ball bounces away from the catcher and taking off but being thrown out. At second is Caden Moore. Well, a pretty good recovery and throw by Ben Clark right there. An impressive effort by the new Albany catcher. And that's the first out, the second out of the inning. And another bang bang play out at second. It was a close play, but New Albany able to get the tag down quickly. Now a ball hit out of play by West. Ben Clark showing off his arm there. Also quick reflexes to get to that ball that had bounced away from him. Two and one now to West. West, the first baseman, hit 260 last year. Now it's two balls, two strikes. This year, West hitting 235. Two balls, two strikes. Good eye by West. That was a close one. That was already the 50th pitch for Reaping off here in this game. But he's a strike away from three shutout innings. Instead, he issues his third walk. 
Deep enough. Thought he had that one. So did most of the infield as they started walking towards their bench. Instead, they will have to continue to man their posts as Ryan Price will bat. Price walked. His only time up. Takes a fastball strike. Reaping off just nice, easy 85 mile per hour gas there. Oh one. That's ball two. Uh, ball one. He's uh, kept it in the mid 80s for the most part with that fastball, 85, 86 in that range. On one pitch is hit towards shortstop. The play is made. They take it to second for the easy out. Eckleberry flips it to Schroyer. And that's it for Wapakoneta in the third. On to the bottom of the third. New Albany leading the Redskins 2 to nothing. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. New Albany leading Wapakoneta 2 to nothing as they come to bat in the bottom of the third inning. Todd Walker and Nate Garlock bringing it to you here on WOSN. Game number two of four to be played here today is with the Ohio Prep Baseball Report Spring Classic. Oliver Schroyer leads off the third for New Albany. Takes ball one. He's singled and scored in the first. Redskins defense really the reason it's 2-0. Schroyer ended up scoring on an error by Taylor Eccles at short. And in the second inning, a ball hit by Romer, probably should have been caught by Price. Ended up going for a double, and then he scored on a single. And right away, Caden Moore down three balls, no strikes. And he gets a strike there. Three balls on a strike now to Schroyer. There's a little pop fly, got in on his hands and it's right in the glove of Grant Jolly. We're out number one. A good comeback there by Moore after falling down three balls, no strikes. He gets a strike and then pulls a jam job against Schroyer. So here's Ben Clark. Ball bounces in there. One ball, no strikes. Clark walked, first time up. Takes a strike. As I mentioned, he is a Oakland recruit. That's not Oakland, California. That's Oakland University in suburban Detroit. There's a bunt, third base side. They field it, shouldn't it? Defensive miscues that time. That ball looked like if he'd let it roll, that was going to end up foul before yeah. it got to the bag. Instead, Clark sitting on first. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure why Jolly fielded that one because he had no chance. If he catches it, it's a hit. So here's Eli Henderson. Bounces in, well played by Hinkle as he didn't catch it cleanly but kept it right there. Henderson, a comebacker, his first time up. By the way, fifth hit already for New Albany. There's a strike. Two nothing, Eagles lead the Redskins here in the third inning. Aiden Moore delivers, runner goes, ball is hit to right. Landon Brandt right under it for the catch. We're out number two. So they had the hit and run action going there, but ultimately just a fly out. As Clark returns to first and Garrett Gibbon steps in. So Caden Moore expected to work three innings. We'll try to get 
a goose egg on the board here in his third frame. And the ball hit toward the hole and in the left, base hit. Pulled hard on the ground by Grant Given. He's hit the ball hard twice. The first time is short hop. Ball handcuffed the shortstop Eccles for an error. This one's a clean single. And Charlie Oakley is the man to bat for the Eagles. With two out and two on. Sixth hit for the Eagles. All of them have been singles except the double by Romer. Ball high. So Moore still bringing it at 85 there as he works in a third inning. He has thrown a ton of pitches. That's pitch number 59. Here it'll be 60. And they haven't been slow pitches. No. He has thrown hard all Ground game ball long. up the middle and through the second baseman. Another error on Wapakoneta that's going to score a run as Ryan Camper failed to field that ground ball. And it's 3-0 New Albany as Ben Clark scores easily. Oakleaf will be on first, given it second. So 3-0 in favor of New Albany. Wapakoneta defense has been suspect this afternoon. Zach Berrienbrock is now the hitter. Ball one. And that is the second unearned run among the three they have scored. And he runs after this in this inning will also be unearned. Another one just missed inside. Two balls, no strikes on the New Albany first baseman. Zach Barry and Brock. Foul back off the ground. Two balls and a strike. You can see the sun is not really able to break through the clouds today. It's a pretty thick cloud deck on a Saturday afternoon here in Defiance. There's a drive to center, but right at Zach Niekamp. So maybe the hardest hit ball of the inning is an out. And an unearned run for New Albany sends us to the fourth with the Eagles leading Wapakoneta. Three to nothing. You're watching high school baseball on WOSN. Wapakoneta down 3-0 as they come to bat in the top of the fourth inning. Designated hitter Drew Bailey will lead it off. My name's Todd Walker. Nate Garlock is with me here in the booth at Defiance High School. There's a pop fly out of play right side. Grant Rapinoff beginning his fourth inning of work for New Albany. He has been perfect as far as he has not allowed a hit but he has walked three and hit four. But Wapakoneta has been unable to play to run. One ball, one strike to Drew Bailey. Raping off, breaking ball strike. That was a good breaking ball. It froze Bailey in his tracks. And he's had trouble with that pitch to this point, so that's a good sign for Grant Reapinoff. One ball, two strikes. Another one, this one is pulled foul. Oh. Bailey bunted in the second inning after Ryan Price had reached on a walk and went to second on a wild pitch, but Zach Berrienbrock fielded the bunt and threw to third, and they put the tag on Price for the first out of the inning. Ball two. Later in the inning, Camper would be hit by a pitch, and so would Eccles. As the Redskins left the bases loaded when Grant Jolly struck out looking. Break even pitch. Swing and a miss. 
fifth strikeout recorded by Grant Rapinoff. And Ryan Camper climbs in the batter's box, the second baseman for Wapakoneta. Camper pitched the last inning of yesterday's win over Elida. Gave up a hit and a walk, but no runs in that 10-2 win. Takes a strike here. Camper, one of four Redskins hit by a pitch thus far in this game. His only time up. Tried to time up that off-speed pitch. Did, but fouled it back, so it's 0-2. Got action in the Wapak bullpen. That should be Ryan Price. We're expecting him to throw next. But is it Brant? It's actually Brant. They're going to bring him in earlier, I think. It is. That is Landon Brant. Now, we were told that Price and Brant would pitch, but the expectation was Brant would maybe pitch at the end of the game, but he's the one warming up. There is a ball. You see Landon Brandt has not pitched in quite a while because of that off non-pitching arm elbow problem. 2-2, Two -two. close, full count. Foul ball. So reaping off, similar to Caden Morris throwing a ton of pitches. Actually, not as many as Moore, I don't think. Yeah, he's actually creeping up near 70 at this point. He's, that was the 67th pitch of the game, a little bit farther into the game than right. Moore was. And ball four. So that's his fourth walk, the third walk in the last Take five the batters. And Zach Neekamp. Is the next man up for Wapakoneta, but will he face Reapin off? It doesn't look like it because we have a player coming out of the dugout to pitch. Zach Casey is going to come in and pitch for New Albany. Let's reset things while we take a break. We'll step aside. New Albany making a pitching change here in the fourth. They lead 3-0 on WOSN. Zach Casey into the game for New Albany. Just his third appearance of the year, he's thrown only three innings. He's allowed to hit, no runs. He has struck out four, no walks, but he has hit a batter. He comes on with a man on, a man out, facing Zach Niekamp. And right away pulls the string for strike one. Wapak trailing 3 nothing. Niekamp struck out looking against the starter, reaping off. A foul ball. How about this pitching line for Grant Rapinoff? Three and a third innings, no hits, no runs, four walks, five strikeouts, four hit batter. <laughs> and he had two wild pitches. He's responsible for the runner at first. Was that called effectively wild? Is that, is that, well, is that he, phrase <laughs> well, he was wild, <laughs> and they didn't score, so yeah, I guess... <laughs> The definition of effective on pitching is not allowing any runs. So you hit both definitions. As they pick the first and diving back in is Ryan Camper. Got my first B kill of the year, by the way. I don't know if you heard that on the air. So I always got to have the ball cap handy or a towel or something. 0-2. Off speed, waits on it, hits it to third. Can they turn two? They do not. Just by a step. Is Boy, good turn really at second base by Oliver Schroyer. Schroyer made an excellent play, and I think the only reason that that didn't get turned is he had to kind of dive off as the runner was coming Short in to get that, uh, get that throw off, and that half a second adjustment. And it wasn't hit that hard to Garrett given a third, so hustle by Neat Camp, he beats it. And now the top of the lineup, Taylor Eccles with two outs. Casey delivers. Fastball right through there at 85 for a strike. 
And I think, you know, what you see with these both these teams is the pitchers we have seen are not their top flight guys, but yet they're coming in throwing mid 80s and upper 80s. So they've got some some guys there trying to develop. There's an off speed pitch through the pitcher. Second baseman Schroyer throw is late. Sure, had to take a couple extra steps to get that out of his glove, and that's what cost him the out. Well, it, he probably thought the pitcher was going to field it, and then after it skips over the mound, it changes how it's spinning, where it's going. So he had to adjust that, and then to right himself and make a throw, and all that conspired for an infield hit for Taylor Eccles. And Grant Jolly will get a chance here in the fourth, uh, fourth inning. 3 0 New Albany. First and second, two outs. The ball just missed. Grant Jolly, 359 batter. A double and two triples coming into the weekend. Had a hit yesterday in three trips. He's 0 for 2 today. There's a ground ball. The third baseman given going into the hole. Falls down. Throws the second. Didn't get him. Right now, New Albany, just nothing going their way. That was a good job by Given to go into the hole and make the play, but he lost his balance. They would have had an easy out at second, and they still almost got an out. And not real good base running there by Eccles. He should have been sliding into second. He came in slowing down, standing up, and nearly got beat to the bag. So another hit. And Landon Brandt steps in with the bases loaded and two outs. All, all three, down. All three runners on base base right now all reached, and the ball never left the infield. Well, at least they finally got a hit after having six runners left on base through the first three innings with no hits. 1-0 to Brandt. Foul back. Landon Brandt with a chance to change the complexion of this game real quick. A base hit here would score at least one, probably two. With two outs, they'll be off on contact. Ball two. Well, the other thing with Landon Brandt, you can see it, even though it's a big spot, you want to break through. He's been battling injury, has missed some time, but staying patient. Staying disciplined, two one pitch. Good pitch, he couldn't catch up on that fastball. A little bit up in the zone, but those are the fastballs you usually try to drive somewhere, and Brant couldn't do it. So, Zach Casey a strike away from getting out of this jam. 2-2. Two -two. Foul ball. Brant has struck out and Rounded out to first. So this is third at bat in just the fourth inning, and his team still hasn't scored. Another 2 2 pitch. Off speed. See you later. Grant is out shopping, and Zach Casey snaps off a beautiful off speed pitch to end the inning. Second time today, the Redskins have left the bases loaded. They have left nine men on base through four innings. On to the bottom of the fourth, New Albany leads 3-0 on WOSN. Landon Brandt will make his season debut for Wapakoneta. The right-hander who will be playing collegiately at Indiana State has been battling injury throughout the season. And actually it was to first his pitching arm and then his non-pitching arm. So we expected him to throw an inning today and we thought it would be perhaps in the seventh inning, but the switch here either means he's gonna throw more than one inning or they just wanted to get him in in the middle of the game for whatever reason. So Landon Brandt will take the mound for Wapakoneta who trails three to nothing. Landon last year threw 22 innings and recorded 40 strikeouts with a 124 earned run average opponents hit a paltry 160 against him. When he's right, he can hit the low 90s on the radar gun. That last warm-up pitch showed 89 on the board. So, see how he does. Uh, clearly, he's gonna be a little rusty, you would think. 
Taking his spot, by the way, in right field is Jacob Brinkman. And you could tell in warm-ups, there's still a little bit of that jitter there, holding on to the ball a little bit too long. He uh, dropped a couple right into the turf. And even though he's been in the game, it's different when you're out on that mound and it's just you and the catcher working against that batter. So we'll see how he does here on this first try this year. First pitch is grounded into left for a base hit. So Whit Romer turned around an 89 mile per hour fastball. Gets the sixth hit of the day. Seventh hit, I'm sorry, for New Albany. And you know what? Good approach by Whit Romer. They know he hasn't pitched. What's he gonna do? He's gonna throw a fastball right down the middle. He was sitting back and ready for it. So Romer's two for two. Here's Brandon Eckleberry. Three nothing, New Albany with the lead. Brant with the long pause. That ball is fouled back on a bunt try. There's gotta be fewer things, that are, not too many things that are scarier than standing down, staring down a bunt when you know that pitch is coming in at about 90 miles an hour. Well, I tell you, you see guys try to do it at the, the, the pro or collegiate level with guys throwing even harder. And you're like, wow, you gotta be brave, that's for sure, or crazy. No balls and a strike. Strike two, not scoring to bunt and taking a 90 mile per hour fastball in the outside corner for strike two was Eckleberry. He singled in a run in the second inning. The only earned run of the three scored by the Eagles. The other two scored on errors and there Brant throws a ball in the turf, knocked down by his first baseman West. Wapak's committed two errors. They have two hits, they have not scored. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for New Albany. 0-2 pitch from Landon Brandt. High heat at 93, ball one. Seems to, seems to feel just fine. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's getting loose. But that one just missed. Brandt takes a big breath and throws a one-two pitch. And Tried to take a little off that one and left it way up. 2-2. Well, as they said in the movie one time, there's a small village on the base path today. The Redskins have left nine. The Eagles have left five through three innings. But they have scored thrice as well and trying for more here on the fourth. Foul tip hung on to by Hinkle, strike three, a 91 mile per hour fastball there. And Eckleberry is a strikeout victim. Here's Owen Johnson. Lead off man, grounder to third, a single. That one is pulled foul. Landon Brandt continues to consistently be a 90 or better. And again, you can see the MPH on your score bug there in the top right hand corner of your screen. Brandt is set, now steps off. Checks the runner at first and pitches. Misses. One ball, one strike. Where Grant Jolly has been the ace of the staff in many respects for Wapakoneta. Had the nice outing against Elida yesterday. Another off speed that misses. Jolly yesterday got his fifth win. That was a perfect record. Of course, Taylor Eccles is the other guy you could say battling for that ace. He's got an ERA under one. He's given up eight unearned runs. Ball high, three and one. The batting average against Eccles is 111. I'm sorry, 110. And the batting average against, against Jolly is 144. Pretty good one-two punch. And Ryan Camper has also given him good effort when he's been out there. Three balls and a strike. 
Ball four. He's not missing by much, but just a little up in the zone, and Owen Johnson works a one-out walk. Oliver Schroyer is next up for the Eagles. And Hinkle meeting with Brandt here to sort of get him zoned back in. Man on first, man on second. Schroyer, a single, a run scored, and a pop up. Left hand batting second baseman. Brandt delivers, pours it through for a strike. And Brandt, 0-1 pitch, that bounces past the catcher. It looked like Hinkle maybe should have caught that, but I think it just caught the turf right before it got to his glove, and wild pitch moves the runners up. So that takes the double play out of the equation. One out, runners at second and third. Ball two. Redskins gonna bring the infield uh, halfway. They're not all the way in, but they're almost even with the bag around the horn. Schreyer with a big RBI chance here. Ball three. Gotta wonder if Brandt is on some sort of pitch count here too, with it being his first game back. He's already at 15 pitches. Yeah. How far they'd let him go. Yeah, they wanted him to pitch an inning. Were they thinking, you know, 20 pitches max or what? Let's see. Three and one. Right now he's just looking for a strike. And he gets it. 90 mile per hour gas and Schroyer had a hack. Three balls, two strikes, one out, two on. Wapak trying to keep this within range. They're already down three, nothing. Swing and a miss. So back to back 90 mile per hour fastballs. Strikeout Schroyer swinging for a big second out. Yeah, it was a big battle to come back and get that out in a big spot. I just going out of way, getting out of trouble. Now the best player on the team, Ben Clark, catcher. Walk and a single, he has scored a run. That was a bunt single. That one's inside. Clark, as I mentioned, uh, headed to play collegiately at Oakland University. Senior catcher. Three nineteen batter coming into the day. He's heading to count two and nothing. Among his now sixteen hits, he has six doubles and two homers. Landon Brandt collects himself. Steps back on top. Peers into his catcher, Preston Hinkle. And delivers. And he skips one past the catcher, and that is going to score a run. Hinkle got the ball relatively quickly off the carom and tried to dive back into the plate to make the tag, but he just couldn't get there. Almost looks like if he'd have gotten Boy. it to a, a Brandt who was coming over to cover, they might have had a better chance at it. I'm just not sure Hinkle and the position he was in could get a throw away, so they decided maybe he could make the tag himself. Ultimately, Johnson scored to make it four to nothing. And ball four, and Brandt pretty visibly upset with that to call. And I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna take him down here. We got a mound visit here. So Ben Clark walks the second issued by Brandt. So that was pitch number 21 here of the, the inning. So you wonder if they did maybe have an idea of how many 
uh, pitches they wanted him to throw today. Well, he has thrown two wild pitches. He has walked two. He has struck out two. He's given up one hit and one run. It's four to nothing. Well, and I'm sure they know that what they think he can do, and of course this is sort of high leverage now, as they say. He's in a pressure like situation. Stay. Looks like they're going to stay with him. Let him to try to get out of this inning. Well, you know, when you, you're restarting your season like Brant is here, you, you kind of want to see if you really got it. And uh, base is loaded, facing the cleanup man on a team of this caliber. When you maybe are a little bit gassed, let's see what you can do. Eli Henderson, 0 for 2. Wants to really break this bad boy open. It's 4 nothing, New Albany. Swing and a miss. Maybe he just took a little off that 87 miles per hour on that fastball. Good spot though, and Henderson couldn't find it. Borderline pitch and Brant again does not get the call. And meanwhile, nobody's paying attention as Clark just takes off for second unmolested and uncontested. One thing about Landon Brandt, he is a very emotional, uh, emotive player, and that is way high, 92. And you see it there, he had his anger there, threw that ball harder than almost any he's thrown, but it was not close. Two balls and a strike. Eli Henderson awaiting the pitch. 5 on that one. Again, took just a little off it. And Henderson fouled it off. Meanwhile, Preston Hinkle going to make another walk out to talk to his pitcher. Henderson hit a little comebacker to pitcher Caden Moore in the first inning. Flew out to right in the third. This is his first Look at Brandt. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. And again, 92, but nowhere close. So it's a full count. First base is open for what it's worth. But Landon Brandt would like to just end the inning right now. Payoff pitch from the Wapak right-hander. Got him looking. So Eli Henderson is out shopping in a, what, 30 pitch inning almost for Landon Brandt. Includes a hit, three strikeouts, two walks, two wild pitches, one run. We go to the fifth. New Albany has scored in each inning. They lead Wapakoneta 4-0 on WOSN. Todd Walker and Nate Garlock with you. Good to have you here. We're at Defiance High School today for the Ohio Prep Baseball Report Spring Classic. And uh, not real classic for Wapakoneta right now as they trail four to nothing. And Nate, they've been their own worst enemy. A couple of unearned runs and that last inning, wild pitches really did land in Brant in. Yeah, we've seen New Albany score in every inning so far, but it really hasn't been um, because of necessarily what New Albany's doing as much as it's been what wapak has been doing defensively. Caden Moore re-enters the game and will bat here. And takes a ball. So the way that works now is Caden Moore is the DH. So he didn't actually leave the game. They put Brinkman in in the DH spot. Ball two. Caden hit by a pitch and walked in his two previous ABs. He went three innings pitching, gave up six hits and three runs. Only one was earned. He walked one and struck out two. Takes a strike from Zach Casey. Right here, right here, 
Four nothing, Eagles lead as we are in the fifth now. Pop up right side, second baseman Schroyer. One out. Wapak does have two hits. They got their two hits last inning. They have left the bases loaded twice. They have left nine runners on base through four innings. Here's Austin West. Ball. The starter for New Albany, Grant Reapinoff, not unlike Landon Brandt, threw hard and didn't give up a lot of contact, but he hit four batters. Swing and a miss by West. He also had a couple of wild pitches and four walks, so really all the traffic was of his own doing, but he never did allow a run. 1-1 one, one pitch, ball two to Austin West. Austin, six foot senior. One of seven seniors on the roster for Wapakoneta. Big cut and a miss by Austin there. Yeah, both swings by West. He was trying to send that ball somewhere far, just couldn't quite catch up to it. Two balls, two strikes now. Swing and a miss. I'll have to throw to first to complete the strikeout, and Ben Clark does so. Two outs, and Ryan Price is now the batter. We expect that Price will come in and pitch next inning as well. I'm building Ryan Price. Price has walked and hit into a fielder's choice. 0 for 1. That's a check swing in on the fist and a pop foul to first base. And the first one, two, three inning of this game and it's turned in by New Albany right-hander Zach Casey. On to the bottom of the fifth, New Albany four. Wapak out of nothing on WOSN. Ryan Price will come on to pitch the fifth inning for Wapakoneta, 6-2 junior making his sixth appearance of the season. He's thrown 13 innings, one win, one loss. He has two saves and 13 innings. He's allowed 11 hits, five runs. He has struck out 16, but he has walked 10 and hit two. Opponents are hitting 234 against him. He has a 2.69 earned run average. And his charge is hold him right here. Wapak running out of time and down four nothing. Can ill afford to see the New Albany Eagles put any more room between themselves and the Redskins. The problem you might have is we've seen New Albany be very, be very patient so far here this afternoon in this game. Price has a little bit of trouble um, with his control at times. They sent six men to the plate against Brant last inning. There's a ball that skips past the catcher. Wapak. After squandering a number of opportunities through the first four innings, went out in order in the fifth. There's a pop out of play. Garrett Given is the batter for New Albany. Reached on an error and singled. Both Wapak errors led directly to runs scoring. Off speed pitch is pulled fouls. He was way out in front of that 63 mile per hour ball. Garrett Given. Had only 27 plate appearances on the season before today. Among his seven hits, a couple of doubles. One ball, two strikes. It's hit towards short. There's Eccles, the throw across, low, but played by West. And Given picking him up, putting him down, got down the line quickly, but he's out for out number one. Charlie Oakleaf now the hitter. As you hear, Charlie Oakleaf. Oakleaf, 333 batter entering the day. 14 hits, three of them doubles, 15 RBI, second on the team coming in. It takes a strike. Oakleaf is struck out looking and reached on an error. Eagles leading 4 0, but trying to keep alive the. In fact, they've scored in every inning, and there's another ball not played by the catcher. Watch out, 
One ball, one strike. New Albany has scored single runs in each of the first four innings. One one pitch off the outside corner, two and one. Another one missed outside, three and one. Exactly right, exactly right. Well, Puck pitching has issued three walks and thrown three wild pitches thus far through four innings. There's a strike. So Oak Leaf back in the box. Payoff pitch. Just got a piece of it. Nope, they're going to say he didn't get a piece of it. The catcher just dropped it. And then tagged him. And Hinkle immediately picked the ball up and tagged the batter as if to say that ball was not a foul tip. The batter, of course, arguing it was a foul tip. Very hard to tell on a replay as we try to Get a look at it, but there you see Hinkle. He immediately reacted as if it was just a dropped third strike. Be hard to tell. I mean, that ball was inside too. Was he had to swing over? It looks like the call's yeah. gonna stand. I, I'm not surprised at all. I'd have been shocked if they had overruled that. Well, it did hit the umpire, as we can see on the replay. It wasn't just not caught by the catcher. So they might have missed that call, but. Regardless, it's the second out, and the off-speed pitch is inside. Barry and Brock has struck out and flown out. Ryan Price trying for a 1-2-3 inning. Strike call. The 1-2-3 inning just turned in in the fifth. Top half by Casey was the first of this game for either team. Now Price trying to match it. Breaking ball missed. Redskins entering the game today. Coming off that win against Elida with a record now of 11 and three as this fly ball will be gathered by Brent. And that is a one, two, three inning. Redskins got to find some offense. We go to the sixth. It's New Albany four, Wapakoneta nothing on WOSN. Top of the sixth inning. Wapakoneta with the work to do, trailing four to nothing. Defensive change for New Albany as the left fielder Witt Romer moves over to right field and Roman Busowitz is now in left. Pop up, short right field and the new man Romer puts it away. So first pitch swinging, Drew Bailey, the DH is retired on the pop up. And that means Ryan Camper is up now so Zach Casey has come in and after a couple of infield hits early in his tenure, has now struck, uh, set down five in a row. Strike called, Camper couldn't pull the trigger. Camper has yet to record an official at bat. He's been hit by a pitch and walked. And that one a little up and in. Redskins only five outs to work with now and four runs down. Casey just missed there. Redskin offense today has basically consisted of hit batters and walks and infield hits. They have been neutered by this New Albany pitching combination of Reepinoff and Casey. Swing and a miss, evens it up at two balls, two strikes. Zach Casey. 
2-2 pitch. Down low. Full count. There's a foul back to the screen. Redskins, the story of this game for their offense is just the inability to get a hit somewhere where it mattered with all those chances they had early. Ball four. And Camper works a one out walk. That is the first issued by Zach Casey, but the fifth overall. Zach Niekamp now bats. Niekamp is struck out looking and grounded into a fielder's choice. Let's see if Camper's thinking about stealing a base. Not going. Ball up and in. Niekamp trying to stir up some action here. He had a couple of hits yesterday, and that went over Elida. Drove in a couple. Strike called. Zach Casey comes set and pitches. Really took something off that one, but it's. Uh, down low. Zach Neekamp had only four RBI in the season until he drove in two runs yesterday. My math says that gives him six now. There's a ball hit the other way to right. It hangs up and picked off by Romer. Right idea by Neekamp trying to go the other way. Maybe getting an extra base for Camper, but we ended up going right at the right fielder. Taylor Eccles. Top of the lineup now, Taylor Eccles. If Lompoc's going to do anything here in the sixth, Eccles is going to have to keep it going. A huge day yesterday. Three singles, a triple. He scored thrice. He foul tipped that one on a 64 mile per hour off speed pitch. Right into the mitt of Ben Clark. Nothing in one on Eccles. And that's picked off on the mound by Casey. Boy, look what I found. A little smile as he comes off the field. And the New Albany pitcher makes the play himself that ends the sixth inning. So a one out walk equals nothing for Wapakoneta. They have now left 10 men on base. On to the bottom of the sixth. The New Albany looking to play add-on. They lead Wapak four to nothing. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Bottom of the sixth here in defiance. New Albany leading Wapakoneta four to nothing. And the Eagles three outs away from winning this matchup here in the Ohio Prep Baseball Report Spring Classic. But they would love to open up a little wider lead. Ryan Price on for the second inning work for Wapakoneta facing Witt Romer. Right fielder takes a strike. Romer double, single, and scored a run. Pitch from Price. All speed stayed inside. Wapak no runs, two hits, two errors, 10 men left on base. New Albany, four runs, seven hits, no errors. They have left seven. Breaking ball is chopped foul off the facing of the Wapak dugout. One ball, two strikes to Romer. And he fouls that one back. Ryan Price set him down in order in the fifth inning. Another one two pitch. And it's caught at third base. 
Sort of a little looping line drive. And that is Caden Moore now playing at third base as Wapkineta continues to massage its lineup. So out number one. And now 0 and 1 to Brandon Eckleberry. Eckleberry singled in a run and struck out. I think that last hit went off the umpire, so he yep. needed, he needed he a second. Give him a little bit of time <laughs> to yep. walk it off. The ball's on a strike to the New Albany shortstop. That time, Price tried to spin one in there. It stayed way high. One ball, one strike. There's a grounder to short into the hole. Eccles throw across. Yes, two up, two down. And Owen Johnson bats. So Ryan Price has settled things down here. Retiring all five batters he has faced. And misses with his first pitch to the center fielder, Owen Johnson. Johnson a grounder to third, a single. He walked and scored in the fourth. Ball two. In the fourth, facing Brandt, he walked with one out, took third on a wild pitch later, and scored on a wild pitch. Here's a hard hit ball to shortstop. Taylor Eccles will throw out Owen Johnson. And Ryan Price, two perfect innings. However, his team needs some offense. Last chance for Wapakoneta, they go to the seventh. Four nothing, New Albany on WOSN. Zach Casey came out of the fourth inning for New Albany and he'll try to finish the deal. And his first pitch of the seventh is a strike to Grant Jolly for Wapakoneta. Casey came in in the fourth with one on and one out. A Couple of infield hits, loaded the bases. He got out of that and he set him down in order in the fifth. Allowed just a walk in the sixth. Now in the seventh, he's ahead of Jolly. No balls, two strikes. Four nothing, New Albany. Bounces in there. Jolly a pop out, strikeout looking, and an infield hit. Redskins down to their final inning here. Got to come up with something if they want to extend the game or win the game. Meanwhile, Casey misses away. Two balls, two strikes to Grant Jolly. New Albany was scheduled to play yesterday. They were rained out against Westerville Central. Wapakoneta did play, played Elida, beat him 10 to two. There's ball three. I'll tell you what, too, that is a drive for New Albany to come up here to defy yeah. it. That's oh, yeah. a long time on the bus. For sure. Actually, it's not just a hop, skip, and a jump for Wapak. Yeah. Payoff pitch. That's hit to right. Going back to right fielder, and he makes the grab. Romer, good play. He got on him pretty quick, but he made a nice adjustment moving back for the catch. One of the better struck balls on the day for Wapakoneta, but Grant Jolly is out. Here's Landon Brandt. Landon, two strikeouts and a ground out. Strike on the outside corner. Brant pitched the fourth inning. Allowed a hit, two walks, and a run. Did strike out three. There is a fly ball to short center field. In comes Johnson, he'll get it. A good break by the center fielder, Owen Johnson. Made that look easy with his break and his speed. He got there without much problem. I think Johnson thought originally he was gonna have to leave his feet to try to catch that and like look like he was about to dive and <laughs> realize that he had caught up to it. Yep. 
So, Caden Moore is the last chance for Wapakoneta. Swing and a miss. Zach Casey blows it by him. Moore has been hit by a pitch. He walked and he popped up. Foul tip, strike two into the mitt of Ben Clark. Zach Casey trying to finish it off for New Albany. Missed upstairs. Casey has uh, struck out two. He has walked one. He's allowed two hits. That one just missed. Two balls, two strikes. Strike three called, and uh, that's your ball game. Zach Casey gets his third strikeout. And he goes the final three and two thirds. And he is going to earn the win in this game as he beats Wapakoneta by a score of four to nothing. Grant Repinoff went the first three and a third. Zach Casey, three and two thirds of shutout baseball. And he and the New Albany Eagles shake hands with Wapakoneta after a four nothing win. Totals in the game for New Albany, four runs, seven hits, no errors. And New Albany left seven runners on base. For Wapakoneta, no runs, two hits, two errors. And they left ten men on base. Losing pitcher was Caden Moore for Wapakoneta. Redskins dropped to 11-4 and four on the season. New Albany now 11-8. and eight. And when you see our WOSN crew on your screen, also thanks to Defiance High School and AD Jerry Beauty. And thanks to the Ohio Prep Baseball Report guys for hosting us and hosting this get together with four quality games. This one goes to New Albany, four to nothing. From my partner, Nate Garlock, this is Todd Walker saying good afternoon from Defiance.